that, but we're going to write some things down. And when I'm in person, I use little three by five cards. I was trying to think if I've been to Hillsboro before. I've done a lot of Rotaries, Chambers, Lions, Qantas in Oregon, and of course in Washington as well. Now with Zoom, of course, it's opening up a lot more opportunities and things. So, uh, and let me have you start down with your, the first thing, I just want you to write a couple things down. I want you to write down my phone number, 206-371-8309. That's 206-371-8309. You're gonna need that later for a text to me. And then I want you to write down the number 42828. 42828. And then the last thing is the word grateful. Just write that up near that 42828. So I will tell you right up front, I talk very fast. I have a little sign on my MacBook that says slow down. And then it says it again, slow down for the second time because I cram a lot of stuff into 25 or 30 minutes because I'm very passionate about this subject of gratitude. But just to start off, because we're on Zoom, high five in the window if you can hear me. If you can hear me, just give me a high five. And if you're doing well, if you're doing super well, give me two fives. Let me just see. <laughs> Look at Hillsborough Rotary. <laughs> had a couple of victory signals and a lot, of, a lot of high fives, a lot of high tens. That's really good. So as I mentioned, it's very interactive. I tell people it's an interactive talk. Don't just act like you're interested. Actually get involved with it and so forth. And if you are tired, I want to see your index finger if you're tired of the quarantine. If you're tired of sheltering in place and you're tired of being at your home, it's, it looks like just about everybody. And then of course, I'm always careful. Last week, the guy got the wrong finger and I don't know what he was talking about. Probably what he thought of the quarantine or something like that. But it was the index finger to prove that. So I will tell you that I had a lot of tragedy in my life. And I used to go into a lot more detail when I first started out speaking seven or eight years ago, telling people about my, uh, my mother dying when I was young and my father took his own life. And my wife passed away when my sons were four and 14. So I had a lot of things that I had to overcome. And along the way, I found gratitude and hence became that gratitude guy is my moniker. And the pandemic is just the latest in another list of things that we had to overcome. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is it all depends on how you look at it. Now I get to look across here, see Roscoe, I can see Peggy and Neil and Laura and just all the different people. That's why Zoom is so cool. And you can kind of make eye contact, even though it's still on a platform, a virtual platform like Zoom. But I'll guarantee you, there's some of you that look at things as a glass half full and some maybe half empty, hopefully not too many half empty. But it does come down, I will start this entire talk with, it depends on how you look at something. And I'll give you a good example. I used to run 10K races, and I live in Seattle, actually, in Issaquah. And there was a race that went from Medina, where Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and those guys live, up by the toll plaza, across the floating bridge, up into Husky Stadium in Seattle. And so I'm running this race, and it's pouring down rain, and I'm about halfway across the bridge. And I look in front of me, and there's like just tons of people. And I can see Husky Stadium in the, diff in the distance, and I'm struggling. Little kids are passing me. And I'm going, man, I did, I've been training 6.2 miles. Well, then I'm trying, I'm chugging along, and I think, you know, let me let's see what's going on behind me. So I kind of turn. It's hard to run and look behind yourself at the same time. And it's just massive people all the way up to the Toll Plaza, all the way back towards Medina. And it just hit me at that very moment as I'm just chugging along. If all the people in front of me weren't there, I would be in first place. I mean, what if all of those people had just decided today we're not going to that race? We're not going to go to that foot race. All those people, guess who'd be out front? It would be me. So it depends on how you look at it. And there's a number of things from the glass half full, the half empty that I talk about that have to do with how you see something. I had a father that took his own life. As I mentioned, he was very negative. I never have gotten negative. I'd say, good morning. He'd go, what's good about it? And I thought, wow, what a message to five kids that are trying to grow up with my mom and my dad. And my mom passed away, as I mentioned. And then sometimes I say to my dad, looking outside, God, it's a beautiful day. He looks at me, it's going to rain tomorrow. And I'm like, man, where did you get that attitude? How did I somehow come out on the other side of it? But it depends not only on how you look at something, but maybe as important as any single view you have of somebody in your life as a person you see in the mirror, how you look at you. So we're going to do the first exercise. So take out your paper. You have your paper handy, hopefully. I tell people sometimes to put them on cards, but I don't do these as, as much live right now with coronavirus. And I want you to write two words. You are. Y-O-U-A-R-E. You are. 
And now I want you to picture, you have to picture, this is not you who's gonna write these words. It's your mom, it's your dad, or maybe it's your biggest cheerleader, the biggest fan, your best friend, grandma, grandpa, whoever it is that just thinks you're the cat's meow. I want you, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds and I want you to write as many things that that person would say about you to describe you. You are energetic, you are talented, you are unbelievable. Whatever they would write, as many as you can in 30 seconds, go. Okay, and that's 30 seconds, and I'm sure you could write a lot more, but I got to keep it moving along here. So now you took the moment, the, the, the moment, the 30 seconds to write that down. Now I want you to reread them silently to yourself, those five to 10 things that you wrote to your biggest cheerleader or mom or dad, whoever would say about you to describe you. Read them down slowly, and after you get to the bottom one, I'd like to have you give me a high five if you feel better after reading all of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Absolutely. Almost everybody in those years. Yep. And there's even a few at the last minute. So why is that the case? Why is it we feel so much better when somebody else tells us how great we are if we don't tell ourselves that as much? I don't understand why we're so hard on ourselves. I've never gotten that. So whether you're battling quarantine fatigue, the stresses and strains of life, that relationship you have with yourself is so critical. Somebody else sees you in such a positive light. It's never made sense to me and I'm, I don't think I'm ever gonna figure it out. I know that for instance, me, I've had a lot of success in my life, but I've had a lot of problems and a lot of traumas and deaths that I mentioned. But I used to call myself a word that I will never say again the rest of my life to describe me. I will spell it for you, but I won't say it. And the word was L-O-S-E-R. And I, I'd look in the mirror and go, you're such an L-O-S-E-R. And I thought, wow, it finally hit me one day. If you don't advocate for yourself, who's going to advocate for you? Well, hopefully it's the biggest cheerleader or it's a mom or a dad or it's somebody that's close to you, a mentor or somebody that, that thinks highly of you. Well, embracing gratitude and focusing on what you have every day is all about focusing on what you have, not versus what you don't have. Maybe one of the most powerful things I can tell you today, if you remember nothing else, gratitude turns what you have into enough. Gratitude turns what you have into enough. So we go back kind of like a, the cat chasing its tail and it's never quite good enough. And when you get gratitude and you focus on all your blessings and you focus on what you have versus what you don't have, you will have the same impact as the people that high five, which was most everybody, about how you thought and how you felt. And that was only 30 seconds to go through that exact example. So are we all familiar with using the chat? Can you guys use the chat okay? I would like to know during, this about four months on this now, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? Coronavirus, quarantine, shelter in place, COVID-19. Put it in the chat, let me open up the chat here, and just pop into the chat and tell me what has been the best thing that's helped you. We're at about, we're at about four months for this now, and I think three and a half, four months, something like that. But is everybody pretty used to using the chat? You just hit the chat button down at the bottom, and then the little, the little sidebar thing opens up. Bueller, Bueller, anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know how to use the chat? Oh, there we go. Okay. Helping others, Pat Robinson, that is such a great thing. One of the things I'm going to talk about before I wrap up is you want to help yourself, help other people. Uh, enjoying quality time with my son in the outdoors, tremendous, Stephen. Boy, the outdoors will really remind you where your priorities are. Taking care of all my family and becoming a chef, not just a cook. Love that. Daily use of an exercise bike, Abigail. Excellent. Funda, what's the, what's the question? What has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? What has helped you the most? That's what I want to know. And while you're putting those in, I'll let you put those in. I'm going to read something else. So I've, I've been doing this for a while now and, and do a lot of talks. But you're not at the meeting. <laughs> What's that? Oh. <laughs> I do two or three Zoom talks now a week.
on me. Lot of stuff's down. Oh, went away for a second. Oh, is it back? Okay. So somebody said to me, what is there to be grateful for? People are dying. People are having these terrible ha things happen to their lungs. And so I put the silver linings of coronas together. There's been a coronavirus. There's been a ton of things that have happened that have really been positive. Now look at the technology. Look at this Zoom call. You guys are down in Hillsboro. I'm up in Seattle. I was telling Dave Noyes that the last time I was in Hillsboro, I was learning how to fly and that was my cross country and it scared me to death to go all the way down there by myself when I was just learning. But you've got Zoom calls, you've got cell phones, texting, all the apps and things we can do. There's all this extra time with family, even though schools are out and some of the parents are probably a little bit feeling uh, uh, <laughs> claustrophobic. It's extra time you'll never forget, that you'll remember forever. There's going to be a vaccine before long. That may not have happened 50 years ago. Family dinner time's making a comeback. When I was growing up, we did family dinner every single night, and who knew what that was anymore? Uh, and then just understanding the importance of now we're going to do this with our elbows, and, and we're not probably going to be able to shake hands as much anymore, and how much we're going to miss some of that, but get back to the eye contact and the smiles. There's all these efficiencies. I would drive an hour to see one of my buddies, have a coffee with him at Starbucks an hour back. Three hours, now I use one hour instead of three hours. And we do the call, boom, we're done, thank you so much, and you save so much time. I haven't been in a grocery store in four or five months. I get Amazon Fresh, knock, 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 there's the door. All these conveniences, these are great. This community sense that we're all in together, you look at all the faces on here, we're all going through the same thing. Nobody is better off or worse off than the next, at least in general. And the final thing about embracing gratitude is it helps you realign your priorities. When you really go through something like this, you see what's really important to you. And hopefully it's your health, and it's your family, and it's your friends, and your kids, and that kind of thing. And I wrote, this is when gratitude really shines, because you find out what is important and what really makes you happy. And as I mentioned before, gratitude turns what you have into enough. So let's just look at a few more here. Able to go back to the gym, projects, people, faith. Yes, Peggy, time with my husband, creating a beautiful house and yard. Fantastic. Bill Cunningham, Bill Cunningham, congratulations, a new relationship. So giving away food and helping people. Yes, yeah, so important. If you want to help yourself, help other people. So you don't have to write this one down. You can if you'd like, but I'd like to give you just a homework, something to try. I do this every day. I've been doing it since the pandemic started. I call it my gratitude walk. And I go out and I get 10,000 steps minimum. They say that's so good for you. And I got the Fitbit and everything. And I make it my gratitude walk to get the 10,000 to 12,000 steps in and focus on one or two things you're grateful for that day. I just think that combination of exercise plus gratitude is so good for you physically and mentally. And at least just promise me that you will try that because it you really is great to get out there and get that fresh air. And whether it's on a track, in the forest, on the road, wherever you might go, however you have a path around the neighborhood, whatever it is, Go out there and spend that time, get thinking about what you're grateful for and get your exercise for your body. It'll make such a big difference. So next thing I want to talk about, the science of gratitude. I only found this out in about the last six months. I've done a lot more research on how gratitude affects you physically, mentally, psychologically. And I'll tell you, it's really important. I'm going to read this kind of fast. These are some scientific studies and research that came out about gratitude. Appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure, and less depression. Depression, anxiety, a lot of people feeling blue, down, that's going to be a real problem as if it, as if it hasn't been already as this thing continues on for a while. A lot of people are pretty down. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, just talked about that, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we don't currently have. Boy, is there a true statement in there. I'm going to get that boat. We're going to buy this cabin. We're going to take this. We're always thinking about things we don't have, and if we can just get those, maybe we'll be happy. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities to appreciate what we currently have. Gratitude turns what you have into enough which you currently have. Happiness is rarely constant. So although happiness is a fantastic goal, gratitude for the tools that get you there are a lot more important. How easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for. And when the circumstances become of life become unpleasant, think about coronavirus again. All of a sudden we forget all these blessings we had. And lastly, we are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards 
and we continually compare ourselves to others. That's why your significant other, your mom, your dad, your biggest cheerleader, they weren't comparing you with anybody else. They were just telling you how great you were. And I hope maybe you put that, you remember those things you wrote down. And I tell people, put it on a little three by five card, put it on your mirror, your computer, your refrigerator, something. And remember what your biggest cheerleader said about you, because that'll help you on days when things aren't uh, going as well. And there's something about that compare, continually comparing ourselves, which is crazy. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will experience. So that's just a little bit about the science of gratitude. So, okay, moving right along. Here's the next thing I want you to do. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds again. I want you to think fast and write fast when I tell you this. And this is gonna be an exercise followed up by some homework. I want you to think, and one of the things that's neat about this, there's a couple of things coming up where you have to rate yourself on a few things. And I will tell you that this is just between you, yourself, and I, just the three of you. So I want you to write down as fast as you can in 30 seconds, the top, as many as you can, five to 10, most memorable events of your life. Could be personal, could be professional, could be family, could be trip, it could be anything, as many as you can in 30 seconds, the most memorable events in your life. 30 seconds, go. Okay, and stop. And as I say, this is going to convert into a homework, but I want you to get started on it. So here's what I'd like you to promise me, and I'm going to ask you for a high five. Today is Thursday, July 23rd. I would like you to promise me that a week from today, Thursday, July 30th, you will finish that list, and it can be one of three numbers, top 25, top 50, or top 100. Now, I know when I look in the Zoom and I could see myself and realize how old I am that I'm generally one of the older people in the group. And so, I've been on the planet seven decades. I don't know what the heck happened. It seemed like I was just at the University of Washington. But anyway, so I did 100. And, and then if you do it on a Word doc or on an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, or on a piece of paper, whatever works for you, put it in the priority order. One is obviously the most important, number two, and so on down the list and then keep it, print it, put it on a card, put it on a piece of paper. I tell you, that will make such a difference when you are having a tough day and you start looking at all the things you've done. I noticed on mine that when I got it completed, I, I mean, I've sometimes had moments where I just thought, been that self-reflection type thing, thing. I don't think I've really done that much in my life. And it's one of those things I try to get out of it as fast as I can. I get to the gratitude journal, which we're getting to next. And it makes such a big difference. And I looked at that list, all of a sudden, it totally turned me around. That's how fast something like that can affect your, your attitude. And again, back to that relationship you have with yourself, which I think is the most important relationship you have. So, okay, moving right along. So, so oh, by high five. How many promised me they'll do that by next, by next Thursday, the 30th? I'm just checking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to David Noyes, and I'm going to ask him, who didn't do this? To let me know, and I'll follow up. We're doing their assignment. I got the thumbs up from David, so that's good. So thank you. And another thumbs up. Thank you. Gratitude journal. This is the centerpiece of what I talk about. Now, I happen to have one here, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. And I did put a link in the chat that shows you how you can buy this on Amazon. I've got some other things you can link on there too, my email and so forth. But I will tell you, if you get this or you get a spiral notebook, I don't care. It is something that can impact your life so significantly. Up in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little saying that says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. There's something about writing that just, I am so grateful for day to David Noyes for calling me to invite me to speak to Hillsboro Rotary. It plants it in your brain. So I want to show you just briefly how this is formatted. There's a day, it says a day and a date. So today's Thursday, July 23rd. There's a daily number we'll come to in a second. There's two lines for current events and special occasions. And that's just, just so you don't have to have a diary. Then there's five or six lines to write what you're grateful for. You can put bullet points. You can put words. You can put sentences, whatever you want. 
Then there's two lines down here that are the highlight of your day. And then on the right hand side, I don't have time to talk about today, but is your gratitude intentions. That's what you're gonna be grateful for before it's even happened. And I will tell you that the next time we meet, that's very, very powerful. So back to the piece of paper. And I love it when people have the journals, but let's go back to the piece of paper. This is another one of those examples where even though you're by yourself, this is just for you. I want you to assign yourself a daily number. That's what I put in this gratitude journal. It's right up in the upper right-hand corner of the left page. And what that number is, is 10 is the best day of your life, and one is one of the worst days of your life. And you could be halves. You could be having a so-so day, a five or a six. You could be an eight and a half. You could be a nine or a 10, or you could be having a horrible day and being a two. Nobody's going to know what this number is. Rate yourself. Give yourself that number, kind of like taking your temperature, and put it in the upper left-hand corner and put a circle around it. Okay, now back to my 30 second clock again. <clears throat> I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. I want you to write, <clears throat> excuse me, once again, as fast as you can. <clears throat> Goodness gracious, go wrong. The things you are grateful for in your life, in order of priority, as fast, I'm not gonna give you any hints. What are you most grateful for? If you can only pick one thing, write that. If you can only pick two things, write that. There's many things that you're grateful for in your life. Your blessings, if you will, 30 seconds, write as fast as you can, go. Okay, 30 seconds. When I'm in person, I usually go 60 seconds, so I gotta keep it keep on, on schedule here. So now here's what I'd like you to do. Again, very personal exercise. You're not sharing this with anybody. Read everything that you were grateful for. Just slowly read it. You'll read it much faster than it just took you to write it. And then I want you to write another number at the bottom of that list. Could be the same number, or the number could have changed to describe you and taking your temperature, your daily number. So reread them again, and then write a number at the bottom. Same number could be different and circle it. Okay, with a five in the chat, from the number at the top to the bottom, how many people's number stay the same? One, two, three, four. Now, from the number at the top to the bottom, show of high five in the chat and the screen, how many people's number went up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. It looks like about two thirds of you. So I have only one thing to say about a gratitude journal. That was easy. That's correct, it was easy because that's how fast something like that can change your attitude. So that's a 30 to 60 second example of what focusing on what you're grateful for can do to your mindset. I won't ask anybody those numbers because that's personal, but somebody who's having a tough day, maybe they're a four or five, maybe it bumped them up to a six or a seven. So can you imagine this takes five minutes to write every single day and that's how much it could impact you. So I gave you that phone number. I would like you to take your smartphones out if you would. And I gave you that phone number 206-371-8309. That's my phone slash text. Please text me the number one thing you're grateful for. I like to get a flavor of my audiences and see what they're thinking. And you can put a couple things if you want, but whatever you're most grateful for, text it to that 206-371-8309, and I like to kind of see how everybody's thinking. Okay, thank you for that. Hopefully we got just a second here. Okay, great. Now, a couple last things. I gave you another number too. I said 42828. 
every Monday morning, I send out a one minute video on gratitude. It's just 60 seconds on gratitude. My sister says the other day, I liked your Monday morning minute. They're always about gratitude. I go, don't, don't you know my name is the gratitude guy? Wouldn't that make sense to you that that's why I would send it out? So if you'd like to receive that Monday morning video, text the word grateful, I had you write that down to 42828. You just text it in 42828 is the number you text. And in the message box, you put in the word grateful and it'll ask you for your email and you will get that Monday morning minute if you are so interested. I was doing a big talk. Thank you for those texts that are coming to left and right. And when I'm in person, it's different. I sell the gratitude journals and I've got books and they come up to your table and so forth. And I was talking to people after one talk and I was, had my journals there and everything. And, and this guy goes, is this your actual journal? I mean, the one for you use yourself. And I go, well, of course I use my own. And he, and he sees that I've got an entry in today, just like I already have for this morning. And he starts flipping through the journal and he goes, uh, wow, you write in this every day. And I just went, can you like listen to anything I've said today? No, I just write in it occasionally. I want you to write in every day. Me, I just write in it when I feel like it. So it can make a big difference. And if you've ever noticed too, if somebody says they start a sentence with, you don't understand, that typically is shorthand for here comes an excuse. So to me, I tell people that are down or depressed that having a gratitude journal can make such a big difference and focusing on keeping us positive, especially through a time like now, which is a very challenging time, of course. Okay, one more exercise slash homework. I want you to do me a favor, and again, maybe by a week from today, I want you to write down, you don't have to do it right now, just write down the homework. Write down the name of three people that you will call and see if you can offer some sort of assistance. You could just three people that you know. Is it an email? Is it a text? Is it a voicemail? Is it a phone call? Uh, it could be a note, a card, a letter, whatever it might be. And as somebody said in the chat, which I really liked, there are people out there, they're always wondering, what can I do? Well, if you want to help yourself, help other people. And you can go volunteer. You can go to a shelter. You can go to a homeless place. You can go to a church, all these different things. But let's start with three people that you know that are close to you and see what you can do to offer them. And just even reaching out to help them will make a big difference too. So people ask me a lot, how, how do I get more gratitude in my life? What can I do and so forth? And so uh, I've got a couple of things I just wanna mention and I'm gonna wrap up in about five minutes and be ready to go. Uh, I ask people a lot, I do a lot of speaking. And so I really appreciate people uh, passing me on if you will. And I'd like to mention a couple of things you can tell I'm obviously very passionate about this. This is like 30 minutes already, and I'm trying to talk as fast as I can, but there's a lot of things that can really help you. So if you can just take a moment and think of anybody that you know that might bring in speakers, and maybe it's a company or a corporation or association or anybody, please let me know and just put your name and phone number in the chat and uh, uh, just put in their speaker, maybe, or opportunity or something like that. And I will personally contact you too. And then the other thing that I will mention is I do do coaching. And a lot of people are very anxious to get coaching. I've got a coach. I know a lot of people that uh, are very fond of that. I offer a complimentary consultation for a 60 minute coaching consultation to find out where people are needing of guidance or the way to get the trajectory of their life on a better plan, if you will. So if you're interested in something like that, please put your name in the chat and I will follow up with you on that. So, so last things I wanna talk about here is sharing gratitude. I just mentioned helping three people. And if you go to help people and you share of yourself and you give to them, it's amazing what that'll do for you during a time like this, which is very challenging to say the very least. So one of the things I do to wrap up is I call this the four T's. It's text, telephone, tweet, and tell. So grab your smartphones because most people are going to text. And what I would like you to do is I would like you, I'll give you again 30 seconds, and I would like you to text somebody in your life and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life and use the word grateful. I don't care who it is. You can do a couple of texts. There's many texts as you can in 30 seconds, but you can also tell or telephone, but we're using the text right now because it's the handiest. So text that person and let them know how grateful you are to have them in your life. 30 seconds, go.
Okay, and stop. You actually can finish that if you'd like. So everybody texts at different speeds, of course. I go to junior high school and high schools and do my talk, and they've knocked out about six texts in like 30 seconds. It's unbelievable. I've never seen fingers move so fast. And in some of the senior centers, it's a little slower, and so I got to help them do the text. But people will come up. It's so different, of course, with Zoom, because you're just, again, looking at people on the camera. But when I'm in person, people bring their phones up to me, and they, they show their phone, and they look at this text. And they show me the text and the text they sent to somebody and the text back to them says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And I was thinking, wow, when the person is just trying to just to be nice and just tell them how grateful they are to have them in their life. And then another one, the guy showed me and it said, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> and so it's something that can we ever send too many flowers? Can we ever be too nice? Can we ever tell somebody how much we love them? I don't know, but I'd certainly rather lean towards doing it too much than not enough. And then one day I was at a talk at a performing arts center and I could see this lady about 10 feet away from me. I was on the stage and she was calling. So she was doing the telephone part and she said, I could hear her talking and she goes, hi, honey. I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm guessing maybe your husband. I just want to let you know how grateful I am for you and how much I appreciate you. And I'm just so thankful. I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> no, see the whole point. It's not from me. It's from you to let them know you're grateful. So I will tell you in the chat, as I said, I put in my links both to contact me. Uh, there's a scheduler link if you'd like to schedule a coaching consultation for 60 minutes. And then I've got different um, YouTube where I do all my videos. And you can also do the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. You can click on the link and get it through Amazon. So thank you so much for being a good audience. I will tell you as coping mechanisms go, I asked everybody about those coping mechanisms. I saw some really good ones. I couldn't go through them all, but I had some really nice comments there. I will tell you that I haven't found a better coping mechanism for me. I don't go into the detail about all the tragedies that happened to me. I only say that now to prove to people I'm not teaching out of some book. And I've been down the road where I looked in the mirror many times, thought, what is the freaking point? I don't understand where this bad stuff has happened to me. I've never found a mindset, an attitude of gratitude, a mindset of gratitude. Gratitude turns what you have into enough that's helped me more. And so I'm out spreading the message to as many people as I can. It can change your life. It can transform your life and it can save your life. I feel it saved mine. I don't even think I'd even be here today without it. So it can do the same thing for you. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> Thank that, you. That was a good speak. That was wonderful. Do we have any questions for David? Cal. That was Chris. Uh, she um, always was talking about grateful. Uh, Write it down every day. Hi, David. This is Cal. So I just, um, hey, after listening to you, um, hi. So um, the COVID and other stuff in life, actually, you know, sometimes uplift us and sometimes some days are bad. Like, you know, I mean, I'm just going to tell you, like, the, the number I put in for today is two. I just for everyone to understand. Oh. And the, the reason being is from the, from the morning I woke up till for this moment and and uh, until i started writing this i just realized that you know it's not that bad but um for you to do this uh, for other people and to get other people's lives better um and, um, and uh, what motivate you to do that like besides uh, your life events but there had to be something else that triggered you that you want to do this um is it uh, just uh, the life and financials or is just something else? Now, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. And uh, yeah. I will tell you, I'll answer it in reverse order. I started in 2012 when I was 62 years old. I'm now 70. And it's been in the last year that I'm actually starting to be able to support myself. That's like six or seven years of not. So it clearly hasn't been financial. But I will tell you, I went and saw the graves of my father and my wife and my mother and some other friends and things. And one day I walked up and I saw this tomb of the unknown soldier. And I just sat there by myself and stared at this marker. And I just thought, wow, what an unbelievable experience to come on this planet and give your life for a cause and not have anybody even know who you are. And so it's sort of that plus needing something to help me from the, the losses and the traumas I'd suffer that I just want to know when I leave the planet, people are going to know I was here. 
and that, you know, that they've said. So, but now I have to ask you, and of course, we're being very transparent. I don't get people that aren't transparent, that are full of baloney, and I'm very upfront about it. Um, I tell a story when I woke up one day, I didn't tell it today, but I woke up, I was a two, just like you said. And I was so depressed, and I just thought, I don't know, my mom had been a manic depressive bipolar person, and so I got it from her, and so I'd have to fight it and, as best I could. So I went to Starbucks and wrote in my gratitude journal, and I went up to a four or five. And then I went up to Burlington, Washington, and did a talk, and this gal came up and stood in front of me, and she's crying, and she says, gonna hug you, and she goes, you just changed my life. And I'd never heard that before. I've heard it a lot since, but I'd never heard it before. And she said, can I buy a couple of journals for my sons and one for me, and then another hug, and thank you so much. And so I went out to my car, and I sat in my car getting ready to drive back to Seattle. I realized I was a nine and a half now. And having lost people to this, I'm, I'm a person who's never even smoked a cigarette or a joint. I don't understand drugs. I don't even drink. I just don't get it. And so people use those things to help them. I can't, I'm not judge, judging people here, but they use them to be a coping mechanism. But in many cases, they're much more destructive. My wife died of a prescription pill overdose, Vicodin and Oxycontin, and she overdosed. She was 38 when Connor was four and Kyle was four. Uh, <coughs> So it's a way to, to have people get helped. And I sat in my car and I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm a nine and a half and I didn't drink anything. I didn't smoke anything. I didn't do anything else. I just made a difference in some people's lives. And that's why I mentioned that if you want to help yourself, help other people. So, but now I have to, I have to ask you, Cal, sorry. Did you, what happened after you wrote, did your number change? Yes, I went from two to nine. Two to nine? Yeah. Hold on, just a second, just a second. That was easy. <laughs> fantastic that's fantastic um, the, the reason i mean i'll tell you the reason too uh, you know it, it was all the how the day started and then a lot of negativity that I've sat in my head and then then when you asked me to write about what your gratitude for you know what you were thankful for like you know i mean i obviously my family my child children you know and and then i'm like thinking gosh i have everything why am I just worrying about crap? <laughs> well, and I, I applaud your transparency. Uh, I actually, I didn't, I, sometimes I get a, again, I, I try to get a, a ton of stuff into just a 30 minute talk, but I actually take these little bottles of pills and shake them. And that's what my mom used to do, who was a manic depressive and call me. So you either come to my house in a half hour, I will eat all these pills and I'll be dead in 45 minutes. And so then I have to drive over and see her and I make do that for effect, but it was true. And so I got some of that manic stuff from her, but I figured out exercise and water and a gratitude journal and friends and health and vitamins and all these different ways, meditation, getting good sleep, exercise, all these things you can do outside of having to go to medication. But I so, I so appreciate your transparency in front of, I don't know, 50 people or whatever it was to say that. But I want to add one little post addendum to the whole thing. And that is, is that if you were a two and you wrote in that book and nothing changed, you went from a two to a nine. And if nothing changed and you were still a two, that's okay. Cause you know what your goal is then get to tomorrow, just do whatever you can to get to tomorrow and hopefully be better. Some days are so bad. And you people know who I'm talking to probably everybody. They're so bad. The only goal is just to get to tomorrow and hope it's better. And if it's the same tomorrow, same goal. And then at some point within a day or two, you'll be back. But that something like that can, I, again, so appreciate your question because that can really help. I mean, a two to a nine, that's just, that's so cool. I'm so, I'm so happy for you. That's so well, cool. So, so it's like, I was really not with it when I got into the call and, and uh, like in my head. And so, and then I realized it's that what made me feel that way. And then when I started writing, down so it opens it up and uh, it's just a little trigger you know it's almost like a spark that things that we don't think that you know all the time yeah um, and, and uh, so when we get a reminder just like when you ask me to write down all, all of a sudden you're like light bulb goes out you know it's just yeah. like, oh, no, wow. that's, that's fantastic well thank you and again thanks thanks for your honesty and transparency that's not always easily found. There's a lot of people that are too embarrassed and they suffer in silence. And I sometimes use the example of um, Robin Williams and, and Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain and all these people that take their own life and they seemingly have everything. And so clearly celebrity and fame and money and power aren't, aren't enough. So, but to be transparent, I think is, is hugely helpful because you at least help somebody to help them with their, their situation as opposed to a lot of people are full of baloney.
So um, um, your, your diary uh, that I looked at Amazon, there's so many of them, graduate diaries. Mm -hmm. And is there a particular one that I picked? Well, the one, the link in the the link in the chat, Cal. That's mine. That's the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. It's in the chat. Okay. You see, it's a pretty big link. It says the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. Okay. Yeah, you can click on that, and that should take you right to my journal. But it's on Amazon, you said, right? Uh huh. Mm hmm. And Donna, can you send? Can you send me the chat too, as long as well as the recording? I I think so. Yeah, I think it kind of comes together, if I'm not Yes, yeah, I'll send it all to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. So, Well, Great. David, this was certainly um, a timely presentation, and, and I think we all appreciate it, and I'm pretty sure we all took something away from it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for taking your time for us today. You Can we bet. all give Thank David you. A, a hand and hey, the tell we're grateful for him? Thank you all. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, good luck to you all. And if you want to reach out for anything else, David at that gratitude guy, that information is in the chat. I'm always happy to talk and I was happy to help because as I was answering Cal's question, there's something about helping somebody else. It's just the most rewarding thing you can do. And uh, if you make a difference in somebody else's life, it can make such a difference in your own. So again, thank you all. Thank you, David. Thank you. you bet. You said you put the link. Well, thanks for bringing him in, David. That was yeah. that was a really good presentation. Uh, let's move on a little bit. Do we have any committee reports? Yes. Okay. We're going to have a fundraising committee meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and a Zoom link will be sent out this afternoon for that. For those of you on the fundraising committee. Okay. How about announcements? Okay, well, I have a couple announcements. So as all of you saw, we're doing the food drive next week. On uh, We have four shifts. And I've been hearing a, a lot of response, people wanting to donate. And I had a nice conversation with the person from Community Action yesterday. And they are so grateful and so thankful that um, that we're doing this to help them and, and what a huge need there is right now. Um, and the, the grant is, is underway and then we're gonna be able to help them not only with food, but financially as well. So thank you everyone ahead of time for that's been helping with that. Um, and, and I also learned um, this week that Bill Gates is matching any Polio Plus donations two to one for the next three years, up to $50 million. So if you gave $25 to Polio Plus, all of a sudden it's 75. So uh, I didn't know that. So I wanted to make you aware of that as well. Um, and the last thing that I have is you all voted for the foundation positions. Stephen Mayer, Gary Seidel, and Randy Bateman are now officially uh, directors on the foundation board. Great. So applause for them. Mm -hmm. Do we have any boasts or brags? Wow, you guys are fun today. <laughs> so um, I just have a question, Donner. Thank you for the list uh, for, for the food items that are the most necessarily you know, needed by uh, CAO. And I uh, also wanted to know if they need any personal hygiene uh, items as well, because I have like a bag of those small soaps and shampoos and stuff, toothpaste, those kinds of things that you get in motels, sitting there waiting for someplace to donate them. Do they want those? You know, I, I would say yes, because Community Action has uh, a shelter that they can house up to six families. They're connected with Family Promise. So mm -hmm. I'm sure, I have no doubt that they would use them for that. Uh, I'll verify that when we're done with the meeting, but I would 100% say yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I have a brag. I, you know, so I'm willing to pay, but I don't know how to do that. Um, so spent a great week with our family in Black Butte. Glad, I'm so grateful for that week that we got to spend together. So far, no one's sick or anything, so yeah. 
we were safe, practicing safe distancing, etc. Good job. Good job. So Marilyn, is that where you got all those little soaps and, and shampoos is when you were over there? You went through uh, no, there. Dennis, no. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't where I got them. <laughs> Uh, and Marilyn, you made the comment about being able to pay. We're in the process of getting Venmo up and running, and then we can start paying for both some brags, and we can start doing some raffles. So it's it's in the works. Probably yes. another week. Okay. So the other question I have is, you mentioned the Polio Plus thing. Um, so do we make that pl uh, donation directly online, or or you know how are we how are you doing that? I. I and think does our club get credit for it if we do it, you know, individually oh, online? I don't know. Uh, let me find out about the club getting credit. Uh, I'll find out and I'll, I'll post it. Okay, thank you. Hey, Dennis, give me a call. Okay. Hey, Bob, give me a call. <laughs> okay, that was, a, that was a good meeting today. Uh, good, good presenter. And if no one has anything else, then uh, I think we're adjourned for the day. So. We are done. Done, 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 done. Wait a minute. Are you, are you waving goodbye, Matt Cryo? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna put you on the spot here. <laughs> okay, thank you all for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.